Stick Motion 1.6 now includes Anaglyph and side-by-side -side 3D export options. So now you can add a little more depth to your animations. Now 3D is generally achieved by creating two spatially separated images, one for the left eye and one for the right. Anaglyph 3D works by separating the red into one of those images and the blue into the other. The results are then combined to produce a single image that may be viewed in 3D using red and blue anaglyph glasses. So as long as you've got a pair of these glasses, you'll be able to see those images on your iPad. Side-by-side -side 3D, on the other hand, works by taking the two images and squishing them together in a side-by-side -side manner. To view side-by-side -side 3D images properly, you will require hardware that can process images in that format, such as a 3D monitor or television. So whilst stick motion can produce videos in that format, you won't be able to view them correctly on your iPad. Now, to produce animations with depth, stick motion not only needs to know the X and Y position of your figures, that is, their left and right position, and how far up and down they are, it also needs to know their Z position as well. In this case, think of the Z position as how far into or out of the iPad screen the figure appears to be. In stick motion, background images will have a Z position of zero, so they will appear to be right at the back behind the iPad screen. Figures can be placed in any Z position between zero and one. Figures with a Z position less than 0 0.5 will appear to be somewhere behind the iPad screen. Figures with a Z position of 0 0.5 will appear to be on the iPad screen, and figures with a Z position greater than 0 0.5 will appear to be somewhere in front of the iPad screen. Just how far a figure appears in front of or behind the iPad screen is controlled by a depth setting. The higher the setting, the greater the perceived depth will be. Let's now see how all of this works in stick motion. I'll start by bringing in a figure of a knight. If I tap on its anchor point and open the figure options overlay, you will see a new Z position slider. The first figure added to a frame will always have a Z position of 0 0.5 which means that it will appear to be on the iPad screen when the animation is exported in 3D. Any subsequent figures added to the frame will always appear in front of previous figures and will thus be assigned a Z position equal to the figure that was previously in front. In this case, I'm adding two aliens and both will be assigned a Z position of 0.5. In other words, multiple figures can have the same Z position and you can change their order by pressing the two buttons at the bottom of the screen as shown. Alternatively, you can move figures to the front and back by dragging the Z position slider. But remember, when exporting your animations in 3D, the Z position will determine how far behind or in front of the iPad screen the figure appears to be. If you are not exporting in 3D, then the Z position will only determine which figures appear in front of or behind the others. So now I'll just take a moment to assign each of these figures a different Z position. I'll place one alien right at the front with a Z position of 1, the next in the middle with a Z position of 0 0.5, and the knight right at the back with a Z position of 0. Now, you'll notice that the figure options overlay now has an extra couple of buttons on it as well. These allow you to see a preview of the current frame in Anaglyph 3D. Press the button that matches your anaglyph glasses. If you happen to be wearing a pair of anaglyph glasses right now, you'll notice that the result doesn't look very good, and that's because the depth has been set way too high, resulting in what's known as crosstalk, where the left and right images appear to bleed into each other. To fix that, I'll close the preview and open the options popover from the top of the animation screen. Here you can adjust the 3D depth, in other words, the strength of the 3D effect. For Anaglyph 3D, it's best to keep the depth at 30% or below. When exporting in the side-by-side -side format though, crosstalk will not be so much of a problem, so you can select whatever depth makes sense for your animation. So now the preview should look much better. If it still looks wrong, then it could be that your glasses have the red and blue lenses the other way around. If that's the case, try pressing the other preview button at the bottom of the screen. Once you're happy with your animation, you'll want to export it in 3D. Stick Motion now provides a bunch of new options on the export popover. Here, 
you can select the anaglyph or side-by-side -side format that you require, as well as the 3D depth. Then it's just a matter of starting the export. Remember, stick motion needs to create left and right images and then combine them to produce 3D video. So 3D video will take roughly three times longer to produce. The other thing that I should mention is that the Z position of figures is fully animatable. So you can use Tweeny to smoothly move figures forwards and backwards.